Scrappy Peeps, it's a Dove Minky Quill and today we're doing a bit of a different video face to face which I haven't done I feel like for quite a while over here. I've been doing a lot of process videos uh, but to wrap up the Inky June Marathon this year I thought I would do a bit of a recap of my favourite uh, scrapbooking supplies, my, my must-haves and of course this is completely subjective so everyone scraps in their own way some people do mixed media some people don't some people do multiple photos some people do single photos some people use pattern paper backgrounds some people do white cardstock it's completely up to your style uh, so I thought I would just show you my must-haves and if you're new to scrapbooking it might give you some ideas of uh, things you might already have or things that you'd like to save up for and I thought I would talk to you face to face have a bit of a chat uh, and also kind of answer some of your frequently asked questions at the same time uh, so let's go ahead if there's anything that you think I've forgotten <laughs> if you're a regular inklet and you watch my videos let me know because I'm sure I've forgotten something I don't know what but I'm sure I've forgotten something um, somewhere and you'll have to excuse I have a little craft lanch over there I've tried to block it out as much as possible but my craft room is a little bit of a mess and I am slightly procrastinating from cleaning it up all right let's dive into it so first off the number one i think must have for scrapbooking is photos let's face it you can do pages without photos but it's kind of nice to include photos <laughs> and like i said some of these things you might disagree with uh you might have other things that you cannot live without on your pages let me know in the comments actually what are your must-haves uh, every one scrapping style is is different so photos to me are super important uh, if you've just stumbled upon my channel I do scrapbooking and I also do project life and uh, I've been doing I started project life in at the end of 2013 and I started traditional layouts I think at the start of 2016 or the very very end like the last few days of 2015 so we'll go 2016 and I absolutely love it uh, I am very behind yep and I take too many photos <laughs> um, but I I love it and currently I don't think I'd be able to give up uh, project life because I love the chronological scrapping and I mix my project life layouts and my traditional layouts all together in the same album so I'll give you a look at that in a minute uh, but as far as photos go you can get them printed somewhere you can print them yourself so I these I'm in Australia hence the accent uh, traditionally I print mine at Big W uh, but I print them in store because the quality of the online is very different to the quality that you get in store uh, so Aussie peeps that's how I do it I also have a Canon selfie uh, which is a little portable printer that you can just plug into the wall and it prints just shy of four by six inch photos so they're postcard size but they fit in the pockets pretty well they're a bit wobbly a bit spacious uh, but you can also print via a, a normal regular home printer if you'd like to that's how I started so my first Probably my first two years of Project Life were all just printed on my normal home printer. I would drag photos into Microsoft Word and resize them. <laughs> this is before I started YouTube. And I would print them out on A4 photo paper and then spend hours cutting out all of the photos. And yeah, if you're going to scrapbook a lot, a selfie is a great addition <laughs> to your stash or just send away and get them printed. The next must-have, I think, is some sort of album to put your stuff in. Uh, I, I have chopped and changed with sizes a little bit. So I started 12 by 12 inch, which is the traditional size of scrapbooking albums. And I started 12 by 12. I did that for three years. Yeah, three, well, two and a bit. And then I found nine by 12 inch albums and I needed a change. I, I had a failed year of Project Life and I just, I needed to shake things up a little bit. And so I tried nine by 12, I loved it. So I did that for three years. And now my 2019 album, my 2020 albums are back in 12 by 12. And I haven't, 
my albums are kind of eclectic so um i pick a maybe a color theme for that year so one of my years uh, i think it was 2015 was black and white so i ended up with five different 12 by 12 black and white albums but they're all different types uh, i definitely like a d-ring album so post bound albums have the little posts to, to bind it and i find those tricky because you can't move the pages around as easily uh, I know there's a lot of companies starting to make a lot of those again, um, so I think they might be coming back in fashion, maybe. Uh, but I definitely prefer the the 12 by 12 D ring album, and you can just unclip it, put your pages in, and then you're good to go. Uh, I get my albums just from all over the place. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a local um, physical store anymore so I typically buy them online uh, when I can. Let me know your favourite albums if you've got any particular ones that you like in the comments below. I changed from 9x12 back to 12x12 because the 9x12 products were so hard to get. They were really difficult and I was just sick of it. Uh, especially here in Australia. Shipping and all of that's very expensive and uh, I was frustrated with I usually buy things in bulk so if I'm buying albums I'll buy six so that I've got enough for the whole year or if I'm buying page protectors I'll buy two packs of 50 because that'll keep me out of trouble for a little while uh, so yeah it was frustrating that I could only get one pack of 9 by 12 page protectors here one from there one from there and it was just too difficult uh, so an album I think it's it's pretty important to, <laughs> to have some sort of album you could also, if you're just starting out with scrapbooking, you could also just buy a normal, um, I don't think I have one on hand, but you could just buy a normal like binder folder from a stationery store and uh, just some normal page protectors like you would use for schoolwork or for documents. Uh, and you can try that size to see if you like it. I love eight and a half by 11, uh, which is that size. And I include those in my normal scrapbook albums as well. Then to go with your albums, I page protectors are a must have. Oh, I have a sneeze coming on. You know when you have that sneeze that oh. oh the kids in my class used to I used to be a teacher. If you're new to my channel, you don't know I'm trying to introduce myself so you don't think who's this weird Australian girl talking about paper. Um but I my OG inklets know. I used to be a teacher and my kids used to make fun of me in my class because I did cat sneezes. <laughs> All right, so on the topic of albums, page protectors. You need something to slip your layouts into. You could, if you wanted to, just punch holes in them if you want. If that's your style, go for it. Uh, but I like a page protector so that everything's kept nice and cosy <laughs> and things can't fall out. Uh, so the two page protectors that I use are pocket pages, like this one here, and uh, there's so many different designs, and I know that there's lots of different companies who make them now. I typically go for this format that's got the four uh, four by sixes and then the four three by fours in the middle. You can do all different page protect um, configurations if you want to. I I had a couple of years where I did all different ones and then I've had years where I've used all of the same ones. So um, it's completely up to you and your, your style. And then the other type of page protector that I use is just a big one for the big layouts. Very technical, a big one. <laughs> I don't know if that's what they're actually called. I think they're more called 12 by 12, but uh, the big ones are good for your big layouts and they can come in all different sizes too. So I use, um, so that's a 12 by 12 layout or let's see what else have I got here. Uh, this one is a 9 by 12 layout. So that's also a handy size. And then I also do 8.5 by 11. And then I also like to do 6 by 12, which are very skinny why am I so bright all of a sudden uh, lighting all right I think I fixed the lighting <laughs> I'm so ghostly pale that it just when my lights uh, my studio lights here hit me it's like <laughs> where's your face gone uh, all right so back on track page protectors they're important too 
next thing that I have got to show you is a paper trimmer. Now, this is something I was skeptical about at first, and you can get away with it without having one um, when you're starting scrapping, but I I think it's worth the investment, especially if you're someone who likes straight lines. I am not a measurer. I like to just snip with my scissors and you peeps know that <laughs> if you watch any of my videos not quite a measurer but if you are someone who likes to measure things to have things straight a trimmer is great uh, I also find it handy because I do different sized big layouts as we're calling them apparently um, if I want to do cut a 12 by 12 piece of paper down to 9 by 12 rather than have to get a ruler out and measure it and make sure it's perfect it is handy to have a trimmer so this is the one that i use it's painted on and old and the handy thing is ooh, is that it has an arm so you can still measure uh, 12 by 12 this is the, the fiscus brand by the way nothing in here is sponsored or gifted or anything um these are all my suppliers that i use all the time uh, so yeah, a paper trimmer is handy. I don't think you need to start off by getting like a giant guillotine type thing, uh, but you can pick up paper trimmers for reasonably cheap. The other thing that is vital, absolutely vital, is scissors. You need a good, a, a nice pair of scissors. And I don't mean expensive, but I just mean maybe ones that your children haven't borrowed to cut up masking tape with and they're all sticky now, or um, that pair at the back of the junk drawer that are really stiff and you can't really open them anymore treat yourself to a pair of scissors that's just for paper crafting <laughs> so i i like big scissors <laughs> with my big layouts and uh, if you're new to this video uh, there's tangents so this is a channel of i should not do that with the scissors but this is a channel of tangents so we we go on some adventures off topic and um I'm not completely serious <laughs> all of the time, so welcome to the inky squirrel tangent thinking. Big scissors, okay, so these, <laughs> these are my favourites. Uh, I bought these from Officeworks here in Oz back when I started teaching, and I bought them because I was laminating so many resources um, for my kindergarten class, and I was sick of cutting, so I wanted to find the biggest scissors possible so that I could just do like big snips and uh these ones are great they're by leda l-e-d-a-h i haven't been able to find them again i probably bought them about 10 over 10 years ago so a pair of scissors is handy um i've also got these pretty gold ones i tend to have two pairs in my craft room at least i say that and there's three others staring at me right now scissors hoarder um but i i tend to have two because i always lose one like there's Maybe you're a neat scrapper, but I have a few craft lanches either side of me, and even though these are giant, they they are very difficult to lose. <laughs> no, they're easy to use. Lose, use, lose. Words are mixed up. They're easy to lose, so have a spare pair, and and make sure it's a pair that the rest of your family don't um, steal or <laughs> take away from you. All right, that's the snippy stuff done. Adhesive. I've got a little list here, which is why I keep looking down at it. So that I don't forget anything with my squirrel thinking. Let's chat adhesives. Now, adhesives can be very overwhelming. And I have to admit, I haven't tried every scrappy, crafty adhesive that there is out there. Uh, but my absolute favourites, I think it's vital to have a wet glue of some sort. So, my wet glue of choice is this one. It's by Scotch. And it dries clear, which is really handy. And I like to use wet glue when, like if you've watched my videos, if I'm um, gluing down something that is a bit more substantial, like wood veneer or something a bit heavier. I also use it if I'm gluing little sprinkly bits down because I'm not dealing with t using double-sided tape for tiny little things. I also like to use it on top of mixed media because double-sided tape doesn't stick to it as well. And I also just like to use it when I'm feeling a bit lazy and want to be quick because it's called quick drying for a reason and you can just and then you're done. So wet glue is really handy. 
Uh, another wet glue that I use is called Glossy Accents and I typically don't use that for actually gluing. I more so use it as a glossy accent. So if you put it on top of something, it makes it all nice and glossy. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't use that in spots where it's going to ooze out because it will dry gloss and you can tell that there's glue there. Other adhesives that I like, where did I put? Oh, here we go. Uh, double-sided tape. So I use double-sided tape a lot. Uh, Aussie Peeps, I get mine at Spotlight and it's cheap. Uh, I use a lot of adhesive and <laughs> if you watch my videos, you guys know this. I live in damp rental properties and the weather here in Australia fluctuates so high. We can have, um, you know, we can wake up and have a three degree day uh, at the start of the day. Very, very cold. And then in summer we have 45 degree days in Celsius. So uh, because of the properties that I live in, dampness is sometimes an issue. And my first albums have had things fall off because I didn't use enough adhesive. So I go little bit over the top with adhesive now but that's okay you guys have learnt to deal with that uh, my other adhesive of choice at the moment I've rediscovered craft foam so this is, this is this is a new love and I'm running low so I'm going to have to figure out where I got this one from probably about two years ago and get some more and then uh, I also have this bad boy and I, this is called uh, ATG, if you haven't seen one of these before, I've used it in lots of my videos. I'm often fighting with it, uh, just because the, I buy knockoff tape for it, because the real tape's a bit expensive. And sometimes the knockoff tape uh, doesn't like, doesn't like me, doesn't like the humidity in Australia. And also I just sometimes load it wrong. So this is fun, but I don't think you need it to get started with scrapbooking. It is something more than um, if you've been doing it for a while and you want to give it a go, give it a go. But it can be fiddly and some people really hate them. Some people really love them. I love them when it's behaving. And then my other favourite adhesive, I'm putting this in the adhesive category. Uh, this is called a tiny attacher, which is essentially a mini stapler. And I love this thing. It's it's just fun to use. <laughs> but it's also really handy for attaching little embellishments and vellum. It's really handy for vellum because you can see the adhesive other, um, underneath it otherwise. And you can get the same effect with a normal stapler. It's just that it has a bit of a longer mouthpiece. What do you call that part of the stapler? I don't know. But... It's handy. You don't need it to start off with, but it's it's a handy must-have. I kind of go in binges where I remember that I've got it and I staple all the things and then I forget about it for several months. Then uh, the other, I'm kind of doing the tools first. This is a long rambly video. I hope, you, I hope you've got this on in the background and just relaxing or getting something done while you're watching this because this is a chatty McChat video. The other thing that I think is vital for scrapbooking is a pen. Um, journal with it, doodle with it, do little stars and doodly borders, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, a black one and a white one. They're my two ones of choice. So I use a Pilot G2 in a 07 size. I've used it for ages. It writes nicely. I like it. It's easy to get. <laughs> um, and then the white is a Uniball Signo Broad white gel pen and it's the, the broad one. So it's the thicker one and I use them both all of the time. So must-haves, must, must, must-haves. All right, so now on to a little bit more exciting things than pens and scissors, but I still find pens and scissors <laughs> cool and exciting because I'm a paper nerd, uh, but let's roll into it. So next up, something to stick your photos to, I think is important. So I use a mixture, so I, if you're an OG inklet, you know that I once used to say that I would never do pattern paper background layouts. Lo and behold, I now do pattern paper background layouts. So I used to do white cardstock backgrounds and do mixed media on them all the time. I still do that, um, but I've branched out a little bit and I still think that some white cardstock is really handy. 
uh, for your stash because you can use it to map photos, you can do mixed media -y stuff on it, you can just use it as a white, white base. Black cardstock can also give some really interesting effects. Um, all coloured cardstock. So I think cardstock is handy. Uh, at the moment, I I do like my Basil Marshmallow cardstock. That would be my favourite. However, they changed the... It's not the formula. Is it the formula? They changed how it's made, so it's not as nice as it used to be which annoys me, um, which you've probably heard me rant about in videos before. <laughs> but I've also been using the, um, just like some textured white cardstock as well. Oh, peeps, you might see a craft lanch on camera today because, ooh wee, we are precariously balancing all the things around the camera <laughs> right now. Uh, cardstock's handy and uh, if you want to, you can get like a mix pack or hitting my light, um, whatever floats your boat. Another thing that I love are paper pads. And the reason why I love paper pads so much is because you get tons of paper in the one pad. I like these as well. So these are like paper, it's very bright. It's just a pack of paper. Uh, and then like little six by 12 ones as well. And the reason why I like that is because, like I said, finding supplies here in Australia in person is quite difficult. Uh, and so I like that a paper pad gives you lots of papers at the same time. Everything coordinates. Bob's your uncle. You can get a page done easily by coordinating the papers. You can easily coordinate the papers, I should say. Uh, so I love paper pads. You can buy your scrap of paper individually. I've got that as well over there in that little holder thing and if you're a new viewer of this video and you've stuck around for this long for my ramblings um, I have lots of craft room tours lots and lots so head to my channel and see if you want to see how I store all my bits and pieces uh, but yes so pattern paper is a, a must I feel um, or cardstock at least something to stick your stuff on <laughs> very technical like I said Next up are journaling cards. So if you enjoy pocket pages, uh, journaling cards are really handy. You can, if you're getting started, do what I did, which was just use pattern paper and cut it down into three by four and four by six sizes. Uh, that worked out really well for me to get started with. There's digital project life cards available. There's, there's cards everywhere. There's lots of companies that have them. Um, I, I have lots, there's rounded corners, there's straight corners. Um, it's very easy to build up a big supply of like Project Life core kits. I did that. Don't think it's necessary because now I have all these core kits that I don't use at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, um, journaling cards are something that you can collect or you can use. <laughs> and I have been guilty of both. I think. Uh, so journaling cards are very handy if you're doing pocket scrapping. Next up, what's on my list? Stickers. Now stickers, stickers are a supply that can sneakily multiply in your stash. I'm just having, I just went away and I've got my, oh, <laughs> my caddy next to me um, of all the things that I took away. And Look, stickers are stickers. They come in so many shapes and sizes. I get nice big sheets of stickers. Um, I've got sticker, would help if I opened it, sticker books that have all sorts of stickers in them. You peeps know if you've watched my videos, I like stickers. I've also got a lot of like little tiny word stickers, which are my faves. Um, so I think stickers are a really handy supply and they're very easy to get, I think. Um, so they're one of my, my favorite embellishments. And then I'm going to put, oh, ephemera. I knew I forgot something. I don't know if this is a must have, but it is very handy, is ephemera packs. Oh, I really can't. The lights are so bright shining here, I can't get it in. Um, but just little packs of little cut out ephemera pieces to put on your pages. For me, they are a bit of a must have. 
I must say I have a love-hate relationship with them in that I love them when I find the right piece but I hate trawling through them and I hate organizing them but I'm working on a new organization to hopefully make it a bit easier for me but yeah ephemera is handy and then my other must-have without a doubt I'm going to put in the category of dimensional embellishments so that could be um, for me that includes a puffy puffy stickers uh, it includes wood veneer it includes enamel dots and shapes anything that is three has 3d-ness uh, and I really like to include that on my page to give it a bit of a pop and make it a bit interesting than having everything flat but if you like everything flat that's okay too like I said at the start it's all personal preference and what you like this is a very rambly video I'm sorry peeps uh, while we're on stickers something that I never used to like which I now cannot live without is labels I use them all the time I use them in my project life I use them in my scrapbooking labels are so very handy uh, so if you can get your hands on those I, they're must have like basic in my stash then what else have we got extra textures now this can be a bit of a controversial one because uh, I I scrapbook for the process and people rarely look at my actual albums um, I can probably count on one hand the time that people have looked at my actual albums in my home if I go to a scrap retreat it's different um, but yeah my family don't look through them I know the kids will one day but really I scrap for the the process and for me to look back at the stuff um, and so I am not overly concerned with the acid free thing which I know a lot of people are and that's completely fine um, but for me it's about the creative process and one day I hope to make um, my pages digital so that, and tag the people in them so that they can find whatever pages they want and print their own photo book or whatever they want to do. Um, so I like to use tissue paper in my layouts, you guys know that. Um, I use a lot of white tissue paper just to give it a bit of texture. <laughs> I think that's what that meant. I'm not quite sure what that meant, but yeah, a bit of something different uh, rather than everything being flat. And I am pretty sure this is an acid free. So if you, that's a priority for you, avoid this. Um, but I love texture. I love things like, this is like wrapping paper. I sometimes use things like that. Painted papers. I had a whole stash where have my painted papers gone? Ah, okay. Let's see if we can avoid the craft lamp. Um, I love using painted papers behind my photos like I would a piece of pattern paper. Uh, I love using those extra textures in my crafting. And while we're on that topic, craft foam. So this is a very, not going to be able to do too much with this, but there's a little bit left. And this is just kids cheap craft foam. Uh, I like to bump up photos with it. I love to bump up embellishments with it. So that's one of my personal must haves. Then as we continue, there's only a few more things left. So don't worry peeps, I won't keep you here all day. Uh, but punches are something that I find enticing but once I buy the punch I'm not always sure how to use it so I like my simple basic punch shapes I love a one inch circle and a larger circle a small heart a large heart a medium heart because I really like hearts and then what's another one that I use a bit I think that's basically it uh, so punches are something that uh, I think for me they're teetering on the edge of must-have they're very handy I could probably scrap without them but I really like them so they snuck into the must-have category uh, oh sprinkly bits so that's the name that I've given to just those final little touches that you put on a page uh, I have these which I don't have I get asked about this almost every day and I'm so sorry I don't have the link anymore I bought them ages ago off eBay and they're just little stars um, but I love little 
petal sprinkly bits so I love those little enamel dots um, I have my handheld where are they I don't know where they are but I have little handheld Fiskars punches um, that I use with my gold glitter cardstock and I do little hearts and little stars uh, just any sort of little little bits to finish off a page then oh something that we haven't talked about yet is alphabets so I you don't need to put a title on every page of course you guys um, do what you want to do I like to have a title on every page I don't know why I think maybe just when I started scrapbooking that's what I saw people doing and then I just fell in a habit and that's what I like now uh, but I use all sorts of let's see what ones have I got sitting around me <laughs> um, I love to use alphabets for my titles I love to use these thickers uh, thickers are a brand uh, well they're by American Crafts and they're easy to get here in Australia so I typically like to use thickers and they're expensive but they're very nice and I also like to have little alphabets too I don't have any nearby but I like to have a mix of larger fonts and smaller fonts um, but you don't necessarily need them this is just my must-haves then Heidi Shine if you've watched me for ages you know I love my Heidi Shine sadly this is discontinued now which is very very unfortunate and I'm sorry to those who have been hunting for it and not being able to get it which seems to happen a lot when I find things like I found my perfect white paint pen discontinued found my gold Heidi Shine discontinued I found a pen there was a pen ages ago that I loved discontinued so uh, I love using gold Heidi Shine to add splatters but something that I've also been using is the Liquitex acrylic ink in gold uh, I don't have it here I think it's still packed in my tote behind me but uh, it is acrylic ink, so it's a little bit thicker than Heidi Shine. Oh, by the way, the, the proper name, if you're new to this video, it's Heidi Swap Color Shine, but I accidentally called it a Heidi Shine in a video maybe four or five years ago, and it's the name's just stuck. And you can't use it without singing. That's a must-have as well <laughs> when you shake it up. Uh, but yeah, so if you can't find Gold Heidi Shine, I know there's a few other companies uh, that have been doing golds that people have been liking. I've been using the Liquitex acrylic ink as well, which I like too. What else have we got? Now, there's a couple of things which I haven't included as my personal must-haves, but they might be your must-haves. Things like stamps. You guys know, especially if you watched, I think it was the last Grab 5, I talked about stamps and how I feel about them. I get a bit nervous uh, so stamps and ink that might be your must-have washi tape is another one I have a whole drawer of washi tape and I love using it but I can avoid you like I don't have to use it so um, but you might love washi tape that's cool um, cut files are another thing that I enjoy using but I, I I'm not gonna put them in the must-have because I cannot use them as well uh, what else tags tags are handy these ones are a bit giant but little tags are, are very handy have I forgotten anything peeps now I know you're probably thinking I haven't got into any of the mixed media so I like to do mixed media on my pages if you watch my videos you know that uh, would you like a separate video on mixed media scrapbooking because I feel like there's a bit too much to include in this already long and rambly video <laughs> so let me know if you would like a separate video and I can show examples of when I've used different types of mixed media and the effects that it gives on that page. Um, let, yeah, let me know if you'd be interested in that because there's a long, long list um, for that. So I think that's it. Check my list. I think that's it. So thanks for joining me today, peeps. Uh, the Inky June Marathon is coming to an end. I think this is the final June video for Inky Quill. Let me check my calendar. Yes, so today should be the 29th. <laughs> um, I'm pre-recording, of course, because the videos come out at 7 a.m. my time. Uh, so thank you so much for joining in this Inky June Marathon. Uh, I haven't been as much on Instagram um, 
and as social media -y the last couple of months just dealing with postnatal depression and all that fun stuff um, but I'm feeling a lot better and uh, I just want to thank you all so much for supporting me over here on YouTube um, and for those who are able to support me on Patreon it really means a lot um, without those patrons I would have had to have stopped Inky Quill YouTube full stop um, because I would have had to have gone back to work full time with two kiddos and it's actually I wouldn't have been able to have Violet yet if it wasn't for um, my Patreon support so thank you to everyone who was able to watch my videos on YouTube and uh, if you've been with me for a short amount of time for the last what I haven't got to watch on but it's just habit isn't it uh, if you've been with me only for half an hour of my rambles or if you've been with me for five six years <laughs> no matter how long you've been watching my videos thank you very much you honest I honestly can't tell you how much it means to me um, I'm a pretty introverted person don't have a lot of friends um, that I see regularly and so I feel like this is a great way for us to connect and I feel like I have friends around the globe uh, so have a lovely day I will be on let's get inky tomorrow for the final video um, I might actually do this one as a premiere perhaps mm, yeah so maybe I can chat with you at the same time as this video is going on uh, but yeah thanks for joining thanks for watching make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it uh, if you've got any extra questions pop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them if you see a question that I haven't answered that you know the answer to it might be where I get something or where do I use this thing or that thing um, answer it for that person so that we can help each other out and I'll see you tomorrow for the last video of the Inky June Marathon over on my second channel let's get inky all right guys have a great week yes it's a Monday today a Monday Ugh the best day of the week. Uh, all right, guys, I'm rambling now. I've got to go. Bye.